This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Ann with a quick anagram on your first coding assignment, uh, working with the snake game in the Replit environment. So after you've joined the classroom, you should have a dashboard that looks something like this. And when you click on your classroom, which will have a slightly different name, you should see uh, a list of assignments possibly and at least one project. And the project that is involved with your first coding assignment is this week one snake game. So um, if you simply click on it, uh, what opens up is what we call a REPL. Okay, a REPL is a complete code and, and running environment for that code. Um, in this case, the, the REPL template that you have copied is, um, has three files. Uh, Index.html, which essentially gives the framework in which um, your code is going to run. Style.css, which um, gives the look and feel. And then script.js, which is really the subject of um, most of the coding assignment and most of this class. We're, this is a class where we're going to learn JavaScript. And we will be doing most of our work in, um, in JS files of one form or another. So to um, take a look at this, at this environment, um, we have a list of three files here. So you think of this as a file tree like you would have on a Mac or a Windows machine. And anytime we want to work with one of these files, we simply click on it. If I want to run the game, I click this big green run button. And I get an implementation of um, a classic snake game, um, classic to some people. It wasn't familiar to me until I started um, using it a couple of years ago. But basically, you have a snake which moves around and can be moved with the arrow keys um, after you click. In this black environment, you can use the arrow keys to move the snake and get him to eat the apple. And if you notice, each time he eats the apple, the apple moves, but the snake also gets longer and it gets harder and harder to play. So um, what I would urge you to do is when you first get this um, project uh, cloned, go ahead and run it, try playing with the snake game. Um, and then uh, your assignment is to make four specific changes to the code, um, but you're also welcome to make, um, to explore. One of the things I'm going to be emphasizing this semester is uh, reading code, which also means reading uh, code comments. Um, I try hard in my code to read to write comments that are useful. I urge you to do the same. Um, sometimes that'll be a graded objective, sometimes it won't be. Um, but other people and your future self will always thank you if you leave some nice comments around. So in particular, if you find this game runs too fast, and um, for those of you who do games a lot, don't laugh. Um, I used to have a real hard time playing this with the, the native speed. I've gotten better over the years. But um, if I read down this JavaScript file, one of the first comments I come to is this one that says, the game goes faster as the delay number goes down. And we have a variable here called game loop delay. So that must be the delay number, okay? And as that number goes down towards one, the game gets faster. If you need the game to be slower, make it bigger. So the game right, the, there's no units here. This is a pretty arbitrary number. But if I change that number from, from 10 to say 20, okay? Nothing happens right away. Uh, my game and my snake are still over here just sort of floating around in space. But if I hit the run button after making that code change, what you'll see is the game restarts. I end up with the little um, four unit snake and he is running visibly slower. And um, I still have to click in the black in order to have my keys move him. But he's quite a bit easier to move around. Oh, I seem to be inept at this moment. So um, what I would like you to do is read down through this code, see what you can make sense of and what you can't. Um, and, in spe and specifically, there are some directed changes in the exercise. Um, I'm just going to run through them real quickly just to make sure you know what goes where. Uh, so we have two small changes to make in the two non.js files. One is index.html. 
And if you read down through here, you're going to think if you haven't had an HTML class that most of this is just pure gibberish, which is fine. Um, but you should be able to match up some of what's in here, like welcome to COSI 1010 snake one, with what you see over here in the game environment. And this heading is, says who your instructor is. And then there's a place for a heading where you have your name. So what you want to do, okay, is simply type your name in here. And again, hit the run button to see that change take effect. And now you see this value reflected over on the playing board. Same with style.css. Um, you may not think you know CSS. You don't know it in very much detail, but almost anybody can read the fact that the score box, okay, because I try to name things simply, the score box has a color of black and a background color of white. And that seems to match up up here with this um, little, little bit here. So if I simply change my, um, my color to something else, let's make it um, blue, okay? And there are 140 named colors that you can use this way. You can make much more complex colors with, um, with hexadecimal codes, but you don't need that for this class. In general, we're gonna be using named color values just to keep things simple. So again, I've changed this file. Nothing's changed on my game because I haven't hit run yet, so I hit run. And now, uh, a little hard to see, but the score text is, um, is blue. And if I change the background to something like yellow, hit run again. Okay. Um, one thing you'll see is that the background disappeared because I spelled yellow wrong. So essentially, if I don't have a valid color, it's as if I didn't have one at all. So I'm going to fix that. Um, one of the things I want you to notice is that really life does not end when you make mistakes. You will make mistakes. Um, sometimes you'll enjoy them. Sometimes you'll suffer through them. But you're not ending the universe when you make a mistake when you're coding. So now we have a yellow background and a blue color. And that is one of the assigned things is to change is to change the color of that text. But most of the changes that we're going to do for the assignment are here. And um, I recommend you read all of this code. Much of it is going to make very little sense to you. But it never hurts to pit, try to pick out the bits that do make sense or read the comments and see how they match up with the code that's below them. And I always put my comments above code. Not everybody does that. Sometimes they put their comments after, and that's never made any sense to me. Um, the exercise recommends that you particularly look at the lines between, say, 17, where we have the background colors um, and the color for this text. And um, I think it's 49, where we've seen two objects be defined. And you'll see that the snake has a color of green and the apple has a color of red. And so if you want to make this a golden delicious, um, I think gold is a color. Um, and you want to make your snake blue, you can make two changes at once. Hit run. And you have a blue snake and a nice little golden delicious apple. Okay, so um, the point of this is to um, just put you in charge of some code, let you play with some things, and um, remember that you, you can do a lot of playing with this code. I would do the required changes first. Make sure you get a screenshot that shows me the chain, this is changed, that's changed, and that you've changed the color of those two items. Get that screenshot, and then you can do basically anything you like in terms of changing things. Um, if you break something, so, um, you know, for example, you make the game to loop delay zero. Um, I'm not sure what that'll do, so let's see. Okay, that doesn't actually break anything. It just makes it so that I couldn't play that game. 
Um, but you can always use your Control-Z key over here. If you're clicked back in this space, you can Control-Z your way back to whatever value was there. Um, and if I run again now, I get my nice slow snake that's playable by just about anybody. I could change my starting snake size to six and have the game be a little bit harder when we start. Okay, because as the snake gets longer, he's more likely as you maneuver him to, to eat his own tail and um, die. This snake does not die when he hits the walls, which a lot of snake games do. Um, this guy just walks through the walls and comes in through the other side. So I hope that helps um, demystify this exercise. Uh, you have um, just, you have a lot of things you can change. You have a lot of things you can break. Control Z is your friend. Um, and if you get to the point where you feel like you're just utterly confused, you could always um, delete the project and start over again. But I hope that you will go ahead and uh, make the required changes, get the screenshot made so that you can turn in and get credit for your work before you get to that stage. Thanks for listening.